Hello everyone, Chaos here, and welcome to another old school RuneScape video. Today, my revamped 1 to 99 magic guide. This skill will allow you to cast the different spells across four different spellbooks, each containing either combat or utility. Damage dealing spells are useful for PvM and PvP, while utility spells allow you to teleport, enchant jewelry, and much more. This skill is absolutely massive when it comes to diversity, and you can level it up in many different ways. You've got spells that offer great experience rates of paying attention, or you can completely AFK it for a more relaxing road to 99. If you find this video useful, remember to subscribe with notifications on, and consider becoming a channel member with the join button below for instant access to our Discord and a ton of extra benefits. I guarantee you'll find something you'll enjoy. These are all the quests that provide magic experience as of the time of making this video. Remember that some of them have a magic level requirement themselves, and you may not be able to do them right away. We are going to do two quests for our initial levels, but this skill can be so quick that I honestly don't recommend anything else to avoid wasting time. It's basically like fire making, fletching, and cooking, where if you do a quest for magic experience, it will end up taking more time than you actually grinding the levels yourself. Now, for quests, I actually recommend not just for experience, but also to gain access to some powerful unlocks, we have the following. By completing Desert Treasure, you may use the Ancient Magic Spellbook, which only consists of teleports and combat spells. This is needed for one of the fastest training methods and overall a great addition to your account. Not exactly related to magic, but pretty much mandatory for one of the methods, I recommend completion of the Monkey Madness 2 quest. This will open the Maniacal Monkey Caves, and this is a must-do if you want insane experience per hour. Up next we have Lunar Diplomacy. Just like before, completing this quest will grant access to the Lunar Spellbook, and it's almost the opposite of the Ancient Magics. This provides mostly utility with only a few things related to combat. In addition, you should also do the quest to Dream Mentor. For some odd reason, you will unlock more spells from the Lunar Book with it, and it's going to allow you to cast more spells we will use later down the road. Last and definitely not least, you should definitely aim to do the current quest called A Kingdom Divided. This will award you with an item called the Book of the Dead, which is needed for resurrection spells in the Archaeus spellbook. And speaking of the Archaeus spellbook, time to get into things that aren't quests, but are still useful for magic. The first one is having 100% Archaeus favor, so you can use the previously mentioned spellbook, which you can use for mostly utility. I also recommend the Hard Fremenic Diary to have access to two additional spells in the Lunar Book. Why these were locked behind a diary is some mystery to me, but both of them will be mentioned later. The great thing about it is that it's also going to help you with farming for a teleport right near the Trollheim patch. Now, for magic, there aren't any items that you 100% need for any method, other than runes, obviously, but it will be fairly nice to have in order to make your experience a lot better. First off, we have combination staves such as lava, mud, steam, smoke, mist, and finally dust. Just like their respective runes, these staves provide unlimited runes for both elements they use, so we'll save a nice amount of money. Next, we have the Tome of Fire and the Tome of Water. If you charge them with burnt or soaked pages respectively, they will act as unlimited source of fire and water runes as long as you use utility spells. So, if you pair up a combination staff with one of these, you will have three types of unlimited elemental runes. And speaking of runes, a nice place to store them would be in a rune pouch, which holds three types of runes. If you're an unrestricted account, you can buy a rune pouch note in the ground exchange and use it on the banker to receive a rune pouch. Iron accounts may play Last Man Standing instead. When your account is at a spot where you can do the Tombs of a Mascot, you will have a chance of receiving an item called the Thread of Elidness. With 75 crafting, you may attach the thread to your rune pouch, and you will be able to hold four types of runes instead of three. The last one that comes to mind is the Book of the Dead for the aforementioned Resurrection spells, so always bring it with you when using Thralls. Since magic can also be trained through combats, every other useful magic item would fall in the category of either weapons, armor, or boosts, so for the sake of not making this video like 40 minutes long, that will be it for now. When it comes to runelight plugins, most of the methods I will show you involve AFK. So again, just like fletching and cooking, the only one I really recommend is Idle Notifier. This will let you know when your character is not doing certain actions, so you can play as efficiently as possible. I will not go in depth about this in the guide, so I will mention it here. At one point, you have to do one of the most painful activities in the game known as the Mage Training Arena. Obviously, if you want to complete a hard and elite Lumbridge Diary. In order to make you lose slightly less brain cells, install the plugin called Mage Training Arena for you to do all the puzzles more efficiently and spend the minimum amount of time in this horrible place. Okay, before I start with the viable methods, I will take just a few seconds to tell you how this guide is going to work. 
Since magic offers a huge amount of spells you can use from levels 1 all the way to 99 across 4 different spellbooks, I will talk about every single spell I recommend you use on your way to 99, and then tell you when I recommend you stop and move on to the next one. I will first talk about the standard spellbook, followed by Ancients, Lunar, and finally the Archaea spells. I'm doing this because there are so many options that you may find a particular method more enjoyable than others, so I'm not going to strictly tell you to stick to a particular method if you don't like it, just like the cooking guide. Stick around until the end to see the recommended 1 to 99 roadmap, as I have a few ways to achieve this 99 quite easily. So, let's go. Alright, our first method has to do with questing, and these two are the only ones I recommend for experience. You are going to do both the Witch's Potion and Imp Catcher to go from levels 1 all the way through 10. If you're an unrestricted account, go to the Grand Exchange and buy a red, white, black, and yellow bead, along with an Eye of Newt and an Onion. Get yourself some burnt meat, and with these items, your first 10 levels will take about 5 minutes, and you will spend more time walking than questing. Okay, fellas, I will now talk about three methods that I don't recommend 100%, so I will talk about them now to get them out of the way quicker, so we can get to the juicy part of the video. The very first one has to do with combat, and you can do the very boring and expensive splashing method. By equipping items that take your magic accuracy to negative 64, you may cast any elemental spell on an enemy in the standard book, and you won't do any damage, so you can stay there for up to 6 hours. It's recommended to do this on rats, spiders, or birds, so you don't take any damage yourself. Keep in mind that you may not get any experience if you splash around the Lumbridge Castle, and this is only recommended if you're building a pure account, or if you're an absolute lazy degenerate. And by the way, that's just a joke, don't get offended. If you actually want to train magic through combat, I recommend splashing or doing any other method onto level 75 or 78, where you can equip a Trident of the Seas and a Trident of the Swamp respectively. I suggest doing this because Trident charges are not that expensive, and you will be more accurate with the Tridents than with the Elemental saves. Since magic is pretty chill, I don't heavily recommend doing this until late game Slayer or combat PVMing, but a nice option nevertheless to spice up your adventures. The third and last method I will mention but don't really recommend is enchanting bolts. I don't like splashing because it can be boring as hell, but I also don't like enchanting bolts because it can be extremely expensive. The trade-off is that it provides great experience rates per hour for the level required. All you need are bolt with the gem tips on them, some runes to cast the spell, and you will start enchanting them mainly with cosmic and elemental runes. Click the bolt enchant icon on your book while holding the spacebar button, and you will enchant them in sets of 10. You have been seeing experience per hour for each bolt on screen at all times, so you can give them a go. Okay, let's start with some methods I actually recommend, and we will stick to the standard spellbook. The very first one is level 1 enchant from levels 10 to 27, and with it you may enchant opal and sapphire jewelry. For this, I recommend an opal bracelet, sapphire ring, or a sapphire necklace. You may use the spell on an item once for them to do it automatically every 7 ticks, or you can manually do it every 3 ticks, so this is what gives us our minimum or maximum experience and the GP per hour. From level 27 to 43, you are then going to cast a level 2 enchant, which is basically the same spell except for emerald and the jade jewelry. Profit margins are going to be a little closer than the previous one, but for the spell I recommend the jade necklace, emerald necklace, and an emerald ring. It provides more than double the experience to the previous spell, so a great boost to experience per hour at this level. We are going to take a break from jewelry, and from levels 43 to 49, you are going to cast super heat. This requires both the nature and the fire runes, and will turn ore into bars without the need of a furnace. Of course, granted you have the amount of coal needed for higher level bars. If you cast it on iron ore, it will smelt it into a bar 100% of the time. Anyway, you will be able to do this every 3 ticks, meaning that at the correct pacing, you could get almost 100,000 experience per hour, which is great at this level. You are not going to profit from it, but we are not going to be using this method for too long, and you are also going to get smithing experience. We are going back to some enchantments, and we will cast level 3 enchant on ruby and the topaz jewelry from levels 49 to 55. Just like the spells level 1 and 2, it's the same concept but different items. For this one, I only recommend topaz bracelets, as it's going to turn them into bracelets of slaughter, which are a great item for Slayer. At the time of making this video, it is the only profitable item, but money aside, by auto-casting them you can get 50,000 experience per hour, and manually doing it will be a max of 118,000. At level 55 you will unlock one of the most iconic spells in the game, High Alchemy. 
With it, you will turn items into gold along with nature and fire runes, and it is great since you don't even have to move your mouse if placing your noted items on this spot. I recommend checking a website called alchemate.com to see the difference in price of alka values. For a few examples, you can focus on you or magic longbows, battle staves, some higher tier rune items, and much more. You can do this until level 99 for nearly 80,000 experience per hour. The last two method in the standard spellbook I recommend is something called a tele alchemy, if I'm even pronouncing that correctly, which is a combination of both the teleports and high alchemy. For the teleport, we will be using Camelot, so equip a smoke battle staff for both air and fire runes. Use a high alchemy on an item of your choice, and then teleport immediately after. While your character is doing the teleport animation, Click on the alchemy spell and use it on your noted item as soon as your character appears in Camelot. Teleport as soon as the high alk animation starts and rinse and repeat for up to 150,000 experience per hour. And now for the only method related to the ancient magic spellbook, we will be using area spells called Bursting or Barraging, available to you starting at level 62. As I said in the intro, Monkey Madness 2 will be our go-to place for this. Grab your best magic or prayer items along with runes, a light source, emergency teleport, food, an imbued or saturated heart if you can afford it, and fill the rest of your inventory with prayer potions. You may use best in slot magic items, or if you don't have the money for it, take prayer enhancing gear such as vestment pieces. Head to Apatol and down the dungeon you explored during Monkey Madness 2. To my knowledge, the path is different for each player, so make sure to find your way to the eastern part of the cave so you can end up near this hole. You're seeing my route on screen right now, so avoid all the obstacles and go back up to the surface if you fall down, of course praying melee. Once there, you may peek into the hole to see if there are any players inside. When you find an empty world, go to the right and lure as many monkeys as possible. Once on the spot, turn auto retaliate on and just look at the insane numbers on screen. Let's talk about two ways to do this before we get into some stats. If you're lazy, you can just stand at the corner waiting to get pegged, turn on auto retaliate and wait for the monkeys to attack you. If you want this to go by faster, you can move like this in order for the monkeys to stack. Once they are in a 3x3 area, use your highest multi-combat spell in the burst or barrage category, and the numbers will be even crazier. The only thing you want from the monkeys are the 1 dose prayer potion, which is going to allow you to stay here for longer periods of time. Their other drops are simply garbage. Once you've been here for about 10 minutes and the monkeys are not attacking you anymore, run to the left and wait for them to become aggressive once again. Go back to your spot and repeat the process. If you ever see someone down here already and you don't have a lot of patience, you could just crash them to assert the dominance like a Giga Chad. You can do about a thousand casts per hour, so experience and cost in that same time is going to depend based on the spell you use. Because there are 8 possible choices, on screen you have been seeing the minimum and the maximum range you can get from level 62 to 99. As an added bonus, you may cast spells in the defensive mode for extra defense experience, so it's up to you if you want to level up this way. As always, you can check the description below for a live run of this method. Okay, boys and girls, time to get into the Lunar Spellbook. As I said before, this is mostly utility, but we are only going to look at a few spells for AFK, Profit or Fast to Training. The first one is Bake Pie, available at level 65. You are going to need uncooked pies according to your cooking level, and just like Superheat, you will always successfully cook them. This is a bit expensive, but we are going to do this for only 3 levels, so it's not a huge loss. Our next spell is Humidify, for which you need the Dream Mentor quest. You may fill up certain containers with water, and at the time of making this video, by using the spell on a full inventory of soft clay, jug of water, or even water skins, you will always profit. Because you can make some cash, XP per hour is not going to be huge. The next 3 spells are separated by 1 level, so instead of telling you to focus on each one for that one specific level, try them all out and see which one you like best. We are going to start with Spin Flax, and this will turn 5 pieces of flax in your inventory into bowstrings for each cast. So, always recommended to have 25 in your inventory to maximize gains. You may spam click the spell and wait to see 5 experience drops to then refill your inventory and do it again. Up next we have Super Glass Make, and Iron Man should be pretty used to this method. The best way to train is by having 3 giant seaweed in your inventory along with 18 buckets of sand and casting the spell to make a molten glass. What's cool about this is that the spell can sometimes make excess glass which will drop on the floor and you can leave them there until there's a stack of 27 for you to pick them all up. This is fairly click intensive but well worth the experience and GP per hour. Lastly on this group of 3 we have 10 leather. Oddly enough this is one of the 2 spells you can cast after completion of the hard Fremitic Diary. 
With it, you can tan 5 pieces of hide in your inventory at once, so try to do this with 25 spots at once. At the time of making this video, Red Dragon Hide provides the highest profit per cast, but always check the prices before committing your cash stack to it. You may cast the spell about 1,500 times per hour, meaning about 120,000 experience in that time. This spell is my favorite one because this is how I got 99 magic in both RuneScape 2 back in like 2009, and also in old school RuneScape. With string jewelry available at level 80, all you need is a mud battle staff, astral runes, and unstrung gold amulet for you to cast the spell. Your character will do it automatically for approximately 1,500 casts per hour just like tan leather, but this is fully AFK, meaning too that you're gonna get about 150,000 experience per hour, and you're going to lose a small amount of money from selling the amulets back to the GE. Our final spell is Plank Make, available at level 86, and this is the best sound effect in old school RuneScape. Anyway, you are going to need completion of Dream Mentor, Money, Astral and Nature Runes, and an Earth Battle Staff. Fill the rest of your inventory with either Teak or Mahogany Planks to make this method profitable, and you can manually cast the spell every 3 ticks for a maximum of 1,800 actions per hour, for approximately 160,000 magic experience. You may also let it run automatically for 1,000 casts per hour, for around 80,000 magic experience in the same time. Alright Scapers, we're almost there. For the Archaea spellbook, I will only talk about 3 spells because the rest are not really viable for consistent magic training. At level 70, you may cast a spell called the Grime with Nature and Earth runes. Fill the rest of your inventory with herbs you can clean thanks to your herb lore level, and you are going to clean them all in one go. I heavily recommend checking prices daily, as herbs can fluctuate a ton day by day. Magic experience per hour is content, and herb lore experience will depend on the material you use. At level 84, you can use the spell Demonic Offering. This is a hybrid method mostly for prayer, but will bring about 100,000 experience per hour for magic and prayer XP will depend on what type of ashes you use. You will need both soul and wrath runes, and each cast is going to consume up to 3 ashes, giving you the respective prayer experience. We're gonna go more in depth into it on the prayer guide. To close out the viable methods, we have Sinister Offering at level 92. This is basically the same as the previous one, but it's going to use bones instead of ashes. It uses both a blood and a wrath runes for maximum magic experience per hour of about 108,000. Just like I said before, this is mostly for prayer training, but definitely worth the mentioning here. <laughs> okay, that was a mouthful. And now, time for a few alternative methods I won't go too deep into, because they're not as AFK, profitable, or efficient as the ones we have seen so far. If you want more information on them, do not hesitate on leaving a comment on this video to learn more. First off, we have the Archaeos Library. By handing in books at people at the ground floor, they will give you a book of knowledge which will grant experience equal to 11 times your magic level. This is what I did on my hardcore from 1 to 54, and it's great since it's 100% free, but you may need some stamina potions. Another profitable training method that won't give tons of experience per hour is charging unpowered orbs. You may cast the different tiers of the spell at specific levels, but at the moment the most profitable ones are air orbs, which you needed to be in the will before, so be careful not to appear on a framed video. A way to passively gain magic experience is by being on the Lunar Spellbook and casting Magic Imbue every time you can. When doing things such as questing or agility just to name a few, clicking on this spell whenever it's available simply means passive magic experience on your way to 99. With a Heart Fremenic Diary you also unlock a spell called Recharge Dragonstone Jewelry. With it you can recharge Amulets of Glory, Skills Necklace and Combat Bracelets, and you will do a full inventory at once. These will almost always be profitable since people are lazy and just want to buy the charged ones at the GE. The final spell I will mention is Reanimating in Sold Heads. I leave this for last because it's similar to Demonic and Sinister Offering, but magic experience per hour is not as high since you can't really cast many spells and is mostly focused on prayer. Regardless, another great hybrid training method for this skill. And now for the part most of you have been waiting for, what do I recommend to go from levels 1 to 99 magic? I will give you 4 paths. The one I did on my way to skill mastery, one focused on AFK, another one focused on profit, and another one focused on speed. Since magic is pretty much the most diverse skill in the game, we have other paths, so you can leave your favorite one in the, in the comments below. The way I did it was pretty simple. Questing from levels 1 to 10, low level combat spells from 10 to 25, then the highest to teleport spell like Varrock, Lumbridge, Falador, and Camelot from levels 25 to 55. 
followed by Tele Alking to Camelot from 55 to 76, and I then swapped to the Lunar Book to do Spin Flax from 76 to 80, and like I said before, I did String Jewelry from 80 to 99. For AFK, it will also be levels 1 through 10 with questing, splashing from 10 to 25, and then spam clicking the highest available teleport from 25 to 55. You can also spam click High Alchemy for low attention training, and do this until level 80 or 86 for String Jewelry or Plank Make respectively. For Profit, it's the same story from levels 1 through 10, and then you are going to stick to level 1 enchant from 10 to 27, level 2 enchant from 27 to 49, level 3 enchant from 49 to 55, and then unlock High Alchemy. Do High Alchemy until level 78 to then tan a red dragon leather for Slight Doom or Profit, and then finally swap to Plank Make at level 86 for a profitable yet AFK training method to make tons of GP on your way to 99. Last and definitely not least, if you want to speedrun the skill, you are going to enchant the highest tier of gem tipped bolts you can from levels 10 to 62. After which you will start bursting until level 86, at which point you will be able to upgrade into barrage spells for even more damage and of course more experience. Remember this is going to be fairly expensive, so it's up to you how much money you want to spend on your way to 99 magic. Ladies and gentlemen, that's pretty much it for this guide, thank you so much for coming and for making it this far. If you did, make sure to let me know how you would get level 99 magic or if you already have it. A massive thank you to all my channel members, you boys and girls are absolutely insane, and your support goes a long way. If you want to be part of this list of legends, click the join button below to subscribe monetarily and receive a ton of benefits in the videos, in the live streams, and of course in the Discord. Stay tuned for the next video, and of course for the next 1 to 99 guide, where I will show you how to achieve mastery in the herb lore skill. Have an amazing day, have an amazing week, and I will see you then. Ba 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 ba. Oh, peace.